Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, team, here we are. As promised, the optic nerve. So we've talked about the retina, and we talked about how the retina and the optic nerve are so closely related. So now I want to take a look at the optic nerve. And this is another one that uh, in the field, not necessarily in opticianry, However, in optometry and especially ophthalmology, the optic nerve is a huge part of the everyday discussion because this is something so critical to vision and so many different uh, things tie into this that the optic nerve is a topic of discussion and you know maintaining its health is of utmost importance. So I want us to understand a little bit about that. However, we don't have to go into the kind of detail that those professionals would have to because it's not necessarily part of our everyday uh, you know, travels throughout our job. However, uh, still very important stuff and it's gonna help you be in the loop, right? So just like we talked about, understanding is power and it helps you be better with your patients and provide a better service. So let's jump into it a little bit. So uh, here is a picture of the eye and the brain. Right. So, of course, we've got the eye first. We've got the optic nerve, which is, you know, uh, the pathway from the eye to the brain. And then you got the visual cortex. We are going to talk about the visual pathway in a future lecture coming up soon. However, uh, and this is going to go into a little bit more detail about how, you know, how things break down through in, in the brain. There's actually a pretty detailed uh, mechanism that everything kind of does and the, the visual process goes through. However, uh, we just want to know that the optic nerve connects directly from the eye into the brain. So it, it, uh, the optic nerve is also known as cranial nerve 2 and transmits visual information from the retina to the brain, right? The pathway, the highway, if you will, from the eye to the brain. Um, though the optic nerve is classified as part of the 12 cranial nerves, uh, it's technically an extension of the central nervous system. Okay, um, and the optic nerve is composed primarily of retinal ganglion cells. We talked about that, right? How the retina and the optic nerve are super closely related. Well, it makes sense that if the retina is transmitting information to the optic nerve, if it shares cells and it's kind of intertwined, would it, would it not make it easier? A lot of things in the body just make sense once you start breaking it all down, all right? So that's the simple kind of concept here. Let's go a little bit more detail. Now, the nerve transmits all vis visual information including brightness uh, perception, color perception, and contrast. It does it all, right? When it comes to vision, the optic nerve is responsible for taking that image that's created through light and turning it into something chemical that we can that we can actually experience in our brain. Uh, the area where the nerve exits the eye, okay, because it has to come from the eye, has to exit and go into the brain, is called the optic disc. And this forms a physiological blind spot uh, due to its lack of photoreceptors. Remember rods and cones, and there's you know you know there's a huge concentration of cones in the macula. Well, the optic disc is right in that area, that fundus we talked about. And there, because it's kind of an exit port, there are no rods or cones uh, in that area. So it's not able to actual, cap actual capture light, okay? And it actually shows how important these rods and these photoreceptors are because uh, they are what captures the light. If they're not there, you're not getting any vision. So that's actually a physiological blind spot. Uh, if, you know, if a patient is to move through the gaze uh, of the eye, there's a point where if light shines on that particular area, they won't see it. OK, uh, but it's actually designed <clears throat> in, in a particular way that it doesn't impede our, our safety or our daily our daily activities when we're looking around. As a matter of fact, if the optics of the eye makes sense and everything lines up, you should never really end up with a. Uh, a situation where the optics are lined up with that optic disc, but 
just important to realize that the disc is an area that no vision occurs, okay? Now, damage to the optic nerve is permanent, okay? And it can cause, it can result in vision loss and abnormal pupillary reflexes because it's part of the central nervous system. Uh, that's another thing that's very important to, to mention here is that we've only talked about its implication with vision, but it's also, the optic nerve controls a lot of other processes in the eye. It controls the, the opening or so the, yeah, the opening and closing of the iris, <clears throat> so the dilation and constriction. Uh, it also controls the uh, a lot of the processes with the extraocular muscles. It controls uh, the the accommodative reflex. <clears throat> so without the a properly functioning optic nerve, a lot of the systems within the eye start to fall apart. So. I hope you realize now how important this structure is, right? It transmits visual information, but also controls a lot of the main, uh, you know, the main mechanisms that allow us to see at the same time. So why don't we take a look at why this is important to us? Well, uh, I want us to remember that it's married to the retina. So we always talk about retinal health, retinal health, and making sure everything's okay. In the last lecture, we talked about how it's important for diabetic patients to get checked because of retinal uh, implications and all sorts of things like that. The optic nerve is just as important. So if one's not working, the other is not going to do its job properly either. So they're very much related. Uh, remember that it's required for vision. It's the link to the brain. We just talked about how it's required for other processes within the eye too. The optic nerve is, is the brain of the eye. Um, it basically controls all its functions. Any damage is permanent. So you can't just have you know, optic nerve damage and say, oh, we're just going to let this heal. Anything that's damaged uh, in the optic nerve does not regenerate. So this is one of the main reasons why catching diseases that affect the optic nerve or keeping it protected, making sure everything is good uh, is extremely important because once you lose cells from that optic nerve, they are not coming back. Uh, and glaucoma comes to mind. Okay, so glaucoma, we talked about a little bit, uh, increased uh, interocular pressure, ocular hypertension, and one of the results here can be of excessive uh, intraocular pressure can be the atrophy of the optic nerve, and that is glaucoma. And that is one of the number one uh, issues with um, glaucoma is optic nerve damage. So it's something that you want to keep in mind, and we are going to go into more detail on that in, and when we start talking about glaucoma specifically. So that pretty much does it for the optic nerve. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. You're a little bit better at the optic nerve than you were maybe about uh, you know seven minutes ago. And we're just going to move on to the next stuff now. All right.